Well, now we are going to build our picture by connecting the dots. Well, here we are with our first dot. This is a female horntail wasp. You can see this thin black organ penetrating into the tree. What she's doing is laying eggs in this dying tree. With each egg also is a small amount of, of fungus that will eventually start to decompose the tree. And the hatched egg, a tiny grub, will eat that decayed wood and fungus and go through a series of changes in growth and eventually emerge as an adult wasp. As we saw up on the tree, the mushrooms or what we call uh, sporocarps or fruiting bodies of the fungus that is decaying the tree have emerged. We can actually see that up there. So we know this tree is filled with fungus. So that connects part of the dot. We have wasps depositing fungus in the tree, the tree breaking down, the grub consuming the decaying wood. So we've connected part of the picture. Now we'll take a look here and you will see little holes perfectly round holes everywhere in this tree. That's where the pigeon horntail wasp has emerged as an adult wasp and gone its way to lay more eggs if it's a female. Now that second type of wasp that we saw has an entirely different life. It's actually a parasitoid wasp. What we saw was the female of that particular type, a member of a group called the agnumen wasps, actually attempting to lay eggs on the grubs of the horntail, which was consuming the fungus and decaying wood in the tree. She will sting the horntail grub if she can find it and then paralyze it. And then she will lay one or more eggs on the grub and those eggs will hatch and they will eat the horntail grub before it can grow up and become a horntail wasp. Now this second wasp's young will mature and eventually emerge from the tree and some of the holes here are probably produced by the emerging wasps of the Ichneumon group that we saw. Those wasps, by the way, are the largest in length of any wasp in North America. Amazing. Their ovipositor is so long that they can extend it maybe three inches into the tree and it turns out that they can find a grub without error every single time they penetrate the tree. And for our final dot in building our picture, we see these cavities that have been made by downy or hairy woodpeckers who are also after the horntail grubs in the tree. But they're very crude. They just tear the tree apart until they find a grub, not sophisticated like the wasps, which can find living grubs and don't actually destroy the tree at all. So we built an amazing picture here of interconnections. The keystone species here is the horntail wasp. It's what is the centerpiece of all of this. It holds the entire picture together. And here I have a diagram that I made that shows the intricacy of the connections that we have. It's a very complicated thing. All the little arrows show where things are passing from one form to another. Right in here, we have the decaying tree filled with fungus and two kinds of wasps and maybe more even in working in the tree. The important thing is that nature is intricate and then nature is complex. And that is part of its beauty. That's what holds nature together and makes it function in such a beautiful way. I hope this has led you to at least some appreciation of the beautiful complexity of nature. Nothing stands alone in nature. Everything has some connection to something else. That's its beauty, and that's what keeps it functioning so well. So I invite you all to go out into your own neighborhoods, find a, a wild place. Maybe it's your backyard, maybe it's a field near your house, and look for things like this. Look for the interconnections, the beautiful interrelationships of life with other things in their habitat and see if you can piece together pictures of your own. This hopefully will give you a better sense of how nature works.